Welcome to the LinkedIn Studio, Sangeeta. Thank you. So you were the first woman executive in the FMCG sector. How have you seen the sector evolve with their acceptance towards women? Well, it's um, not been great. There's been uh, some movement. So they are getting uh, more open to the idea. I do find that there's a change. Uh, while I say that, um, there are lots of companies that haven't been able to make that change. There's uh, still a long way to go. Uh, in this, but I think there are many, many factors that affect the journey of uh, women through the corporate uh, world. And um, I'm a living example, as there are some others, of um, how we actually made that journey. And it's not an easy journey, but it's doable mm -hmm. and it's enjoyable. Through sales to HR, um, what was the biggest challenge? So one of the difficulties at that time was just, uh, you know, the the uh, daunting challenge of uh, being out of uh, your home and office and, you know, traveling across the country. So yeah. that was one of the challenges. I think the other challenge was that there were no women in business. There were hardly any women. Yeah. And um, I think the challenge lay more with the people who worked with me rather than my challenge, <laughs> because I think for them it was unusual uh, to have a woman walking uh, with them and doing whatever uh, was required to be done. Did you ever feel that you're being undermined just because you're a woman? Uh, no, actually, I must tell you that uh, my formative years were spent with one company, that's Nestle, and there was absolutely no discrimination. Uh, in fact, they, I think, demonstrated uh, their uh, appetite for diversity by hiring me. I was mm -hmm. the first woman they hired. And um, I, didn't, I didn't feel any bias, um, any organizational bias. Sometimes, uh, and it, it's true that you do face uh, a bias from people, and uh, that is to do with their mindsets. It came with its own challenges. And uh, I think you've got to have the space to say, I'm going to take this in my stride. Uh, it's not a bed of roses. No one promised you that. You had a child. You had to take care of home plus this. How did you do that? It certainly is, um, it's a stretch and you have to be willing uh, to do that. Uh, that's one. The other is uh, the support around you. So I think in my case, there was a lot of family commitment and support. Uh, almost as much as I had for my career, uh, my family had for my career. And that's, uh, of course, uh, uh, dependent on two things. One is that they are wonderful people and they, you know, uh, my family wanted to support me. The other important thing is um, how can you make them a part of that discussion? Uh, so whenever there were difficult moves, uh, we always sort of sat down and talked about it. We are still very far away from an egalitarian society, right? We are. And uh, I think, um, you know, the word egalitarian, uh, it, it's, it, has, uh, it has an external and an exter internal context. And I think the external context is, of course, how people can be more equal in their response to a man's career and a woman's career. But I think uh, equally, women need to be uh, egalitarian to themselves, mm -hmm. you know. And often uh, we, as women who do things much more than just work mm -hmm. in an organization, uh, you've got to give yourself that space. And, um, and I think it's important to... Uh, have that discussion with the family and help them mm -hmm. to, co you know, co-op them into your career. How do you think your stint with HR shaped your career? And Rajita, I think one of the things which is important um, as you grow, uh, you know, you climb the corporate ladder is to try and get cross-functional exposure. I would actually encourage that uh, mm -hmm. because um, uh, as a leader, you have the bandwidth to learn I think it's very important to get cross-functional exposure. So I think it's important to try and move across functions because it widens your horizons. It gives you very different perspectives on uh, exactly the same business that you're involved with. Mm -hmm. And I think it helps you to move up the ladder. How did you suddenly think of writing a book? I've been very fortunate. I've had excellent exposure, very good corporates. I've worked across... Uh, three different multinationals, a uh, European one, an American one, and an Indian one. It all came together in my head on 2nd of June, 2015. In those next 48 hours, I saw the brand that I had helped to build with great affection 
and with great care, actually um, being pulled down and going down the tubes uh, through negative advocacy in just 48 hours. This brand had been built over some 30, 35 years. And I think um, the thought in my mind was that here was a great story of how it was created and you know, made successful, etc. And no one has really written about it. And maybe I should not leave planet Earth without doing that. You brought Maggie to India. That was one of the biggest steps that you took. So when you reflect now, how was that experience? It was great eventually, <laughs> but it was a lot of hard work. Uh, so uh, one of the things, I mean, I always tell um, people who are just starting out that um, hard work never killed anybody. <laughs> My father used to tell me that. So I said, uh, you know, if you find something hard, just don't give it up. Just keep at it. So uh, I must tell you, we had um, a, a large number of people within Nestle who were completely devoted to the project. We actually uh, didn't expect it uh, to be such a success uh, when we launched. And we were a little cautious because I have to tell you, this was the first food product in the country that was not packaged in a rigid container. So we were quite cautious in, in our sales uh, targets in the beginning, and it just took off. But one of the important things I learned out of that was, in the good times as well, be consumer-centric. You wrote an article on LinkedIn about leadership. So what is that one crucial skill that you swear by? I think to be successful, uh, in business and as a leader, uh, it's important to develop something I've called fly vision. Okay. And uh, fly vision has two aspects. And one is um, flying with the birds. If you fly with the birds, uh, you soar to new heights. And when you soar to new heights, uh, new horizons emerge. The landscape changes. And you're able to actually re, uh, recontextualize where you are and perhaps where you'd like to be. So in a sense, it gives you a great strategic perspective of how you could craft a new future for the business you're in. But with equal ease, and you come to the second part of fly vision, you have to be like a fly. And uh, a fly actually has a 360 degree vision. And that's why you and I find it difficult to swat. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also because the fly is extremely sensitive to any movement around itself. I think that's the other ability that a leader needs to have, is to be very aware of what is around them, uh, to have the ability to work through the detail and ensure that that great strategy that they have is going to see a fantastic front-end, brilliant execution. Mm -hmm.